April is the cruelest month. Reading lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. It's almost like T.S. Eliot knew that this was going to happen in April. Hello, welcome to The Wine Show. I am Joe Fatterini, one of the low on whom assurance sits like a silk hat on a Bradford millionaire. This is not just about wine. This is improving broadcasting here. We are Reithian in the old BBC sense. Educate, entertain and inform. Like Noel's house party back in the day. I thought I'd like a bit of T.S. Eliot. Here's the theme for today's show. Better than all that stuff he did about cats. Anybody seen that movie Cats so far? Somebody described it as, what was it? Um, an inane experiment in musical theatre. Welcome to an inane experiment in wine broadcasting. You may be able to hear outside, there's a very heavy helicopter. That is somebody on their way to uh, the Nightingale Hospital in London. Thank you very much indeed to all the first responders, to nurses, NHS, doctors, uh, refuse uh, people. Thanks very much. We had our bins cleared today. I appreciate it. They all had to be sprayed beforehand. You're doing an amazing job. Welcome. To the wine show at home. What have we got coming up to? We have three wines from a brilliant independent wine merchant. We've got uh, a big shout out. We have answers to your questions. And before we go any further, make sure that you like, share, subscribe. <laughs> like, share and subscribe. So like it down here uh, where it says like and then subscribe to this down here as well. But share it amongst your friends. Also subscribe to The Wine Show's uh, newsletter. So go to thewineshow.co.uk, sorry, thewineshow.com, I think they both work, and subscribe to the newsletter and we'll give you all the details of these wines here. What do we have today? Well, we've got a gallimuffery, a wine nonsense coming up for you. Um, I'm going to answer a question straight away. Let's get stuck in. We've got one from Sarah from the mountains. She was watching our education special on Friday. She says, are you ever too old to get started in the wine industry? No. Uh, I'll tell you why not. I'm going to give you a really good real life example. It's all very well me saying that. Uh, Kathy Hamilton. Hello, Kathy, if you're watching. I'm sure Kathy won't mind. She joined the wine trade as a sort of second career. And um, I remember working with her very happily, uh, two wine merchants, I think, certainly one. And she's brilliant. She's now the head of on trade for Strathnava Wines up in the north of Scotland, based out of Inverness. Oh, people on Inverness. Oh, I've had some happy times in Inverness. Madonna's wedding. I went to Dornach. That was the coldest I've ever been in my life. Um, so, yeah, no, you're not. And don't worry about the relationships. If you are the kind of person who likes getting on with people and loves wine and loves sharing your love of wine, you'll be fine. Go and do it. Sarah from the woods. Sarah from the mountains, sorry. Um, now then, Sarah in her email also mentioned support for small businesses and first responders. We've been giving a shout out to lots of UK emergency services and essential services over the last week. Over the weekend, we had a request for a shout out for Chief Sarah Muir of the US Coast Guard in Honolulu, Hawaii. Brilliant. This came from Clinton Muir. I suspect you're related. And she uh, says that uh, Chief Sarah has been a US Coast Guard Communicator of the Year twice, crumbs, and is currently managing communications around COVID outbreaks within the Coast Guard out in Honolulu. Um, well, Chief Sarah and the US Coast Guard, we salute you like that, because that's how you do it in the United States. Not like the British way, long way up, wobbly hand, short way down. TA, that's me back in the day. Uh, today we have fallen into the welcome embrace of Kevin O'Rourke of wineman.co.uk. Go and look it up now. Look it up with those fingers. Um, wineman.co.uk. Kevin is a, a keen triathlete. <laughs> Not the only one. So you may see from just one side of me. If we can get that up, there is a photograph. Of, there is a bicycle just off here. I'll see if I can get that on screen. Um, he's also an ultra runner, which is why apparently he does a lot of yoga because he's tight. The hips, and your piriformis. Oh, God, I saw piriformis myself. Uh, he's got a fabulous business uh, based in Milton Keynes. Now, we like to share a little bit about Milton Keynes um, because we like to tell everybody where these wines come from. Uh, I've got a quote here, Christopher Booker, called Milton Keynes the utterly depersonalised nightmare which haunted Aldous Huxley for 40 years. So... Uh, 
sitting on the fence there. No, it's a bucolic place, really. Uh, it is only in light jest that it is known as Satan's lay-by. <laughs> it's the butt of so many jokes. We like Milton Keynes. My brother lives just up the road. In fact, Gavin, who's my brother's friend in St Albans, you're looking for a good Malbec recommendation, aren't you? Well, I'm going to tell you what to do. Go and ask Kevin. So get yourself on to um, whyman.co.uk and go and ask Kevin for a good Malbec recommendation. I've had a look. He's got some great ones there anyway. Um, interesting facts about Milton Keynes. They filmed part of Superman 4 in Milton Keynes. It's the home of WD-40. And I noticed that Kevin uh, lists his home address, Trumpington. Well, Trumpington, Baroness Trumpington, brilliant name, who died last year. She um, was at Bletchley Park, which is where they broke the Enigma Code, about which they made the film The Imitation Game, which featured Matthew Good of The Wine Show. <laughs> got there in the end. Right, what are we going to have first? I've got three brilliant wines. Uh, we're going to have a Tikvez uh, Smedrevka. Now, Tikvez is both the region in North Macedonia, but also this winery. It's the Tikves winery, or Tikvesh, I think it might be. And Smedravka is a very old grape variety. And I've got to tell you, I've read about it, but never had it. White flowers, white peach. It's funny how lots of people are sending us not very linear, precise, challenging wines, but more comforting, juicy, fruity styles of wine. Maybe that's something to do with the times that we're in. We want something that's a bit more of a comfort blanket than something that's terribly taut and razor sharp and difficult. Now, this is believed to be a great variety that was planted by Probus. Remember Emperor Probus, first person who planted Muscadet and England from last week. He also planted, uh, particularly, particularly Serbia and Kosovo, with its believed this great variety. Interestingly, still growing. Hmm. It's lovely, ripe, juicy fruit, mouth watering. Seven pounds eighty-five, bargain. That's really good drinking. Apparently, in um, Serbia, particularly, people like to drink this with soda water. So you are allowed in this case to go and have this uh, as a spritz. You know, white wine spritz, soda water, ice cubes. Lovely on a beautiful day. But today we are having spring rains, as in T. S. Eliot's poem. Um, Northern Macedonia, always like to, you have to mention it, was it um, at 33, Alexander of Macedonia cried salt tears as the no, there were no worlds left to conquer. And the famous rejoinder, Eric Bristow's 27. Um, Sid Waddle quote, if you're not really into darts, you won't get that. This is a great quote. Um, Alexander the Great was a big boozer. Now, we are all about moderate, sensible drinking here on the wine show at home. Do not do like Alexander the Great, who clearly didn't listen to his uh, tutor, because his tutor was Aristotle, who wrote half a book about sensible drinking. It was in, um, is it called Physical Problems or something like that? And there's, I think it's book three of Physical Problems is about wine and drunkenness. Um, not least, there's a fairly, it tells you a lot about the Greeks, there was quite a long bit about how if you drink too much, how do I put this? It's, it's difficult to be a fine, upstanding gentleman. Bye. Too indelicate. Anyway, that clearly was a problem apparently for Alexander the Great because he had a massive harem after he overthrew Darius the um, Third, and apparently he had three hundred and sixty-five women in his harem, but he, he he troubled them not. Apparently, he was light in his use of the harem. I'll tell you one thing I do know about Alexander the Great: his mum was Olympias, and she was a herpetologist, as indeed have I been. I'm not in the moment because Consuela. The uh, Colombian rainbow bow constrictor is with you, Frankie, my son, and all his friends. Hello, Frankie's flatmates. I hope you've cleared up all those slugs in the downstairs bedroom. Um, very much looking forward to coming up and seeing you all at university. I know you're not there at the moment. You're all studying hard. But Frankie's flatmates and everybody else at uh, Durham University, hello. Behave. But yeah, the snake keeper is a herpetologist, and apparently Olympias, who was a follower of Dionysius, the god of wine. So it was Alexander the Great's mum, and she used to sleep with snakes in her bed. She also thought her son was a god, which made him a megalomaniac. So uh, not all sensible. Right, next wine, Katima Alpha Estate Zinamavro Hedgehog. This is £15.87. 
Kevin, thanks very much, because you've given us some wines from interesting, slightly curious places. So we start in North Macedonia, we then go across the border into the northern part of Greece. It's not Thrace, is it? This is just north of Thessaloniki. Um, Zina Mavro, another of these autochthonous, indigenous grape varieties. It means literally the sour black grape, which gives you a bit of a clue. It's got really, it's got quite keen acidity and it has a lot of tannin. It is in some ways the Nebbiolo of Greece. It ages very well. This is a 2013, so this has had a bit of time. It's just soften up and it's starting to evolve as, alongside, I don't know, um, what would we call it, sort of raspberry and uh, blackberry fruits, um, a bit of plum. It's it started to get tobacco leaf and allspice, um, church pew sort of oak, lovely bit of oak into it. Mm. I've got to tell you, 1587, for wine that's seven years old is quite hard. For fine wine that's seven years old is really hard. You're not going to go and find many wines that are this good at that kind of an age. Brilliant glass of wine. If you like Barolo and Barbaresco, you're going to love this. Uh, if you, you, you know, to be honest, if you like sort of clarets, dry clarets, particularly from sort of the from Poyac and Saint Steph, it's not a million miles away from some of those styles. That's glorious wine. Mm. It's called Hedgehog apparently because the vineyard is a single vineyard site, is a nesting site for um, an endangered species of the hedgehog. There you go, so you're doing good. And they look after these hedgehogs in the vineyard. But yeah, Zino Mavro, oh, that's lovely. Yes, yeah, raspberry ish and spicy. Don't know what that would go with. Lots of stuff. Mushroom risotto. That's what I'd have with that. Phil Olson. Hey Joe, loving the daily show. Are there any vegan specific wines you'd recommend? Also, what makes a wine vegan or not? The filtering process. Um, it's quite hard to recommend vegan wines because sometimes you can make a vegan wine one year, but if you have a different sort of haze, it's not really the filtering so much as you whisk in egg or milk proteins and things and it makes them full bright. Um, sometimes there are hazes that are really hard to remove unless you use things like egg icing glass from fish bladders. Um, various animal derived proteins, gelatine sometimes. Now what you can use, which isn't necessarily, I mean it's vegan, but it's kind of not, eth it's not, not ethically vegan, is a thing called polyvinyl polypyrrolidone, which is a microplastic, um, which does the same sort of job, but lots of people don't like it because it's a plastic. Um, the What you really should use is pea protein, and pea protein is makes wines vegan. Thing to do, look out for it. Uh, a lot of wine merchants now will tell you whether their wines are vegan or not recognise that we should be telling people what is in wines, but it won't always be the same year on year, um, because it's sometimes hard to get hold of the pea protein. Right, the third wine. A bit grand this. 62 Anniversario Primitivo di Manduria from San Marzano. This is a bit of a legend, this wine. It's £23.49, which I know sounds like a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but it's a lot of wine. It is, it's a lot of wine. The Primitivo is interesting, great. As you may know, it is also Zinfandel. So it's the same great variety as Zinfandel. It's also the same as Kastelanki, I think, in Croatia. So it's grown, it's gone from certainly Serbia, and there are examples of it a little bit like this wine has come from Serbia. It's moved its way out through the Balkans. It's got to the Adriatic Sea. It's come across into southern Italy. Then it gets to America. And this is where it gets quite interesting because the story goes that there was a, a nursery in it was a Habsburg monastery uh, in Vienna and a guy shipped a load of wines across to somebody in Long Island he I can't remember his name you have to look it up um he then got them all mixed up and he sort of mislabeled and he thought there's another great variety called Zierfandler which is an, an Austrian Hungarian red Quite different grape variety altogether. And apparently he sort of thought, oh, well, this must be more of that Zierfandler. And so but he made a spelling mistake when he wrote the little note and it became then Zinfandel. So it wasn't quite even Zinfandel. It took various iterations to become Zinfandel. So Primitivo was believed to be something else. There was a spelling mistake in the label in Long Island. It then gets planted out into the United States. And that's how it got its name. It's more common than you might think. Because I know... It's a slightly different example, but um, Cabernet Garnished in China is actually Carmenere, but nobody really knew what it was. And there's a German ampelographer, it's a good name to know that, somebody who studies grapevines or anything from the Ivy family. But a German ampelographer in China said, 
Well, I don't know what this is. It's a sort of mixed Cabernet because it was a bit like Cabernet Franc. It was a bit like Cabernet Sauvignon. It was a bit like Merlot, which is sort of what Carmenere kind of is. So he called it Cabernet Gemischt. But the Chinese person who was writing it down misspelt it and they mistranslated it. So they called it Cabernet Gemischt with an N. And that's how he got its name. Oh, no, isn't it? This is a big wine. And I'm going to describe this sensorially. I don't know, sensually. This is like sitting on a big, plush divan. It's warm and enveloping and velvety and satin and sweet when you have a try. Mm. When I say sweet, I don't mean sugary. It's so ripe. It's almost raisin ripe sweet. There's a tang to it, which has to, has to, have, to have that balance. Soft pliable plush tannins that is a wine and a half it's absolutely delicious mm. you imagine it sort of coating your mouth not in a rough way just in this velveteen sort of way that is really delicious it's very inviting if you are looking to be cheered up looked after cared for 62 anniversario primitivo di mandoria from san marzano i cannot be better than that oh that is so good a few people had asked me about this before. It's the first time I've really properly tried it. Mm. I'm, just, I'm just really enjoying it. Now, we've had a question. I'm going to go, it's actually a little bit further down the list, so I'm going to have to go and dig through. Where was it? It was from a lady down here. Um, Deirdre Ma. Now, I just remember this one. She says, I love a big and bold red wine. I'm still searching for a go-to wine of this kind. Is there a red wine you'd recommend that's full of body with leathery, spicy tobacco and rich fruit notes, yet is smooth as silk at the same time? That, Deirdre, is it. So if you like uh, wines like that, Primitivo di Manduria, Smart Primitivos, um, you can get everyday Primitivos, you know, good value as well. Uh, Zinfandels, similarly. Um, and things like even like Plavats Mali, which you now get in Croatia, which I think is a sibling of um, Primitivo Zinfandel Castellanki. It's Plavats Mali, that very similar. You also have a second question, which I might as well answer now. My daughter was born in 2016 and I would like to lay down a case to drink at her 21st. Any wines that had a particularly good year that year that would be good to open in 2047? Yes. Um, you're, you're in luck. Vintage Port. Uh, 2016, brilliant vintage and vintage port. Some people have even compared it with 63, which I was very lucky to get. I wasn't born in 1963, some years later. Um, they are still, 63 is still drinking really well now, and I'm ancient. So uh, you will find 2016 definitely by 2047. It'll be ready then. Ports these days are ready younger than they used to be. Uh, you could probably even dip into some of them now. A little bit harsh and bright, and it's not at its fullest, but... Um, certainly ready in 21 years' time, 18 years' time, probably 50 years' time, 2016 ports would be really good. So that's my recommendation for you, Deirdre. I hope that is helpful. Thank you very much. Remember, keep sending in your questions. So what you need to do, like, share, subscribe. So uh, like just down here. Um, share with all your friends. Do tell everybody about the uh, about the show. Is it really nice for us? Because we like to talk to more people. Um, but also, if you subscribe to this channel here, you'll always get updates. Remember to turn on your notifications. I have my notifications so that I can tell when you've asked a question. I try to remember them all. Um, but that way, you'll always get reminded. The same with our Twitter feed and Instagram feed. And there's a teaser here. We just started putting out some stuff from Series 3. There will be more to make sure you get to see all the first details about series three of The Wine Show coming out. Make sure you got your notifications on, on Twitter, Instagram, and you subscribe down here. And get the newsletter. We'll tell you all sorts. We'll tell you other little bits and pieces. Like the answer to, open this thing with T.S. Eliot. What does the T.S. stand for in T.S. Eliot? Good quiz question, that. Right, what have we got? There's another question here. Neil Miller. He's talking about undiscovered gems in, he recommends British Columbia's Okanagan Valley for great Pinot Noirs, Riesling and one Cabernet Sauvignon at least from Fairview Cellars. What are my thoughts on the region? You'll find out if you go and see series two of the wine show where we visit, Amelia and I, we go paddling. God, that was a disaster. Now you do admit that you've got some Roussan and Viognier on the Naramata bench. I've got some, bizarrely, is that my, I've got some Marsen, is it? So this is from uh, the Okanagan Valley, and this is um, made by this is 
No, this is Rusan. So this is Jackie Fast. UK um, people will remember her as Team Wacky Jackie from The Apprentice. You remember the Canadian lady who did very well, but Alan Sugar, Sir Alan, Lord Sugar, he thought that she was too successful already, so he didn't give her the money. She makes rebel pie ice wine. It's very good. Um, I might have a go at that later on in the series. Um, so, yes, we do love it. And I know the Naramata bench is just near, is it Snake Island? The snake's on it. Or Rattlesnake Island, that's it. And somebody told me about Ogapogo. Or Ogapogo. It's like the Loch Ness Monster, but for uh, the Okanagan Valley. So apparently it's a similar thing. Um, Eric from Norway. <laughs> You're going to come from Norway. Be called Eric with a K. Oh, That's a great name, Eric. Hello, Eric. Hello, all Norwegians. I know that uh, we're on Mark and Island. Big fan. Hey, hey, for all the Norwegians. How am I doing? Um, recently, in the last few years, you started to get it. You love champagne. It's an expensive love. Uh, your favourite producer is A.D. Kutilas, especially the 1809. I don't know that one, I've got to tell you. Um, what you're asking, and you like Joseph Cromie Tasmanian Sparkling Cuvée. I love Joseph Cromie Sparkling Cuvées. He was a butcher, was Joseph Cromie. He fled or left the Balkans some way. Is he Croatian? Something like that. Um, great sparkling wine. And um, you ask for recommendations. I'm not going to give you recommendations. What I am going to recommend is some books. These are today's book recommendations. They are the most expensive book recommendations ever. This is Christie's Encyclopedia of Champagne and Sparkling Wine. It costs £200, but you can sometimes get discounts on it. It's by uh, Tom Stevenson, who's lovely. I really love Tom. And uh, Essie Avalan, Master of Wine from Finland. So you ought to have it because it's a Nordic country and you're in a Nordic country. Um, it's not always £200. I got it for less when I bought it. I did buy it. Um, it is invaluable. It's not just champagne, it's sparkling wines from around the world. and They're all in here. Loads and loads of really good bits. Jackson, all sorts of people. Um, so that's my real go-to. The other one that I recommend, Peter Liam's Champagne. This is lovely. Not only does the book come in a special drawer, but it's got a drawer with maps in it. Little maps of the Champagne region. It's beautiful. Uh, it's not quite as if you like, exhaustive, but it is Utterly fascinating. Peter's done an amazing job uh, on that. This one I think is about eighty pounds. <laughs> Champagne books are seriously expensive. But that said, that is this is less than you know a prestige cuvee bottle of champagne. One, and in fact, Tom Stevenson's book is less than quite a few prestige cuvee bottles of champagne. I care to mention. Vie, is it what's it? Bollinger's VAV? No, that's not. That's about one hundred and twenty pounds, something like that. Anyway, not cheap, smart champagnes. Um, Carl Cadrigari. Hi, Joe. I wonder if you could share a Chilean Carmenier recommendation. Thank you. Well, we love, I love Purple Angel from Montes, which was in series one, and also Floresta from Santa Rita. We visited Santa Rita, lovely little estate there. Um, who else do I like? I know, go to De Martino. And they have a fabulous company. Hello, Sebastian, if you're watching. Good friend of mine, Sebastian De Martino. Um, Pietra, oh, what is this? Alto de Pietras, that is theirs. Um, there's the one from Aconcagua, from Panqueue. I love pronouncing Argent uh, Chilean names, not Argentine names, Chilean ones. Panqueue, which is in the Aconcagua Valley. And that is by Erasuris. They make a really lovely carmen there from up there. There's real precisions of the fruits in, um, in Aconcagua. So those are good ones. Um, what else do we have? Um, Alicia Ray from Melbourne, Australia. She says, Joe, you aren't a bad teacher at all. No, I really am. I'm a very bad teacher. Um, I love watching you talk about wine. Thank you very much. Now, you've been thinking about doing a WSET course. Good. WSET. Would you start at level one or two if you've been drinking lots of different wines for a while? Level two. I mean... Level one's kind of fun, but it is very much an intro, sort of gets you in. So if you have been studying a bit and you've read a few books, you know, you feel you know your way around, it is possible to start at level two. I began at level two, uh, hammered through that fairly quickly. Uh, level three, similarly, polished that one off. And then level four, spent two years of my life. Um, also, have a look at Liz, uh, Lindsay Holman has a very funny story about wine on Friday's YouTube. So go down, go to Friday's WSET training special and see Liz, Lindsay Holman's story. And actually, it's a really uplifting one. I won't tell it just now because uh, you'll go and have, uh, don't want to go and steal the thunder uh, from Lindsay Now, I've got one question over here. Where is it? Um, 
No, it's not that one. I think I'll be better prepared, wouldn't you? Oh, uh, Lee Kwai Wo. I think I've got your name right. You're asking about German wines, and they're hard to get. We hopefully will have some German wines coming up. There's one I've got just behind me. Just pull them out. So what we've we got here, this is Willy Schaefer, um, Gracher Himmelreich, uh, Riesling Cabernet 2018 from the Mosel, which you will see in series three. Not this wine, but me in the Mosel Valley. I bleed quite heavily. Um, this is from Tanners. Tanners has a really lovely selection. Tanners in Shrewsbury. Go and have a look up for them. They've got a lovely selection of German wines that uh, I wrote about actually not so long ago. One of them was Willy Schaefer's Gracher Himmelreich. There we go. So, we're at the end. It's time to finish. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Remember what you have to go and do. You've got to go and visit thewineman.co.uk. Kevin O'Rourke, go and support him, buying some wines. Brilliant guy, lovely selection, really well done. No minimum order. Um, all the wines, all these three wines are described in that description box just there. Like and subscribe to our channel. Um, follow us on uh, Instagram. Um, you can watch all the back episodes. They're all on this channel. So go and have a look and see some of the other bits and pieces. Look up on Amazon Prime and Hulu for series one and two of The Wine Show. And you can go and catch up with all of them. Um, I don't do this alone. I've said this before, for production support, I have uh, Charlotte Wilde and L. Perry. For editing support, I've got Louis Broomfield. Thank you very much, Louis. Uh, the studio director today was Victoria Beckham. Thank you very much, Victoria. At Caravan, hello, Caravan, that's Bobbles the Chimp. Uh, on Dolly Grip, we have Neris Hughes. Thanks very much, Neris. Soundman today is the late Professor Sir Stephen Hawking. It's good of you to join us. It's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Catering today, Carol Baskin. It was delicious, Carol. Thank you very much. I'm not sure what was in that. And the chief medical officer today was Dr. Mo. Come back. Join us next time here on The Wine Show at Home.